Right, welcome to Soccer As We Like It, the Man United direction. And today we're honoured and privileged to be in the presence of ultimate greatness, the man we all know and love to hear, the voice of Old Trafford, Mr. Alan Keegan. Welcome to the show, Alan. How are you, mate? Very well indeed, Tim, and it's an absolute pleasure to be on your show. I've heard so many good things about it, so uh, I'm glad that we're able to get the time sorted out. You're a, you're a man who never gives up, so well done for your perseverance. Thank your, you very much. I know you're very busy. I kept saying, I know he's busy. I know he's busy. So um, just a, a questions, and I'll, give, I'll tell you what the fans asked as well. So how did you get into this position you are as the, the voice of Old Trafford? Were you like a DJ, an MC previously? Yeah, I suppose it was a mixture of a few things, Tim, because um, back in the day, yes, I did DJ, um, but I also did a little bit of local radio as well. Oh. And um, I have to hold my hands up straight away. I actually, in the early days, got some um, some work across the road. Can I say the name? At yeah. Manchester City. Oh, <laughs> I'm, are you serious or are you joking, mate? <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm very serious, but I was a young man. I was very hungry to get into right, the business. Right, right. you got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah, you've got to do what you've got to do. And ultimately, um, you know, I've, I've said this a few times. I, I, man United fan, two season tickets in the Stratford end. I've still got them. My wife and my son used them. You know, we, we've never let them go. But yeah, so I suppose, Tim, when we look at the story and the timeline, it's one of those, I was in the right place at, at the, the right, right time. time. Because, yeah, because I had the CV, you know, I was I was working at City, I was doing a little bit of radio, I DJed, I'd, I'd hosted a lot of events. So basically my CV, when it came to getting the job at United as a stadium announcer, which was, which was back in tw 2000, so it was 21 seasons ago, wow. um, you know, it just all dropped in at the right time, Tim. Right. Were you ever a City fan at that time or you were a United fan at that time? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, my parents, my background's Irish and right. my father, you know, I mean, Georgie Best, the Irish players that wow. have played for United. So, no, I've always been a United fan. But, you know, I always say this. When I was working at City, I was professional. You know, right. you had they to employed be. me to do a job. Um, and, of course, they weren't the big, massive juggernaut that they are now back right. then. So... You know, it was it was just one of those things that I ended up working for them. But I have to say this as well: if, if I'd never have worked at City, I'd probably I've never have got the job and ended up at United. So it was a wow. wonderful stepping stone. Right, right. I can see that. Wow, excellent. So now that there's a pandemic, how different is it now for you? Whereby there's no crowd, there's no fans. How 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 challenging is it for you? It's very challenging from the point of view that um, you know. As we all know, there's probably a total of around 300 people in the stadium. So that's right across the board. You've got the, you know, the directors, you've got the staff, you've got the team, you've got the TV, you've got the crew, you've got the, the, the staff who are working for the actual game itself. So right. it is very surreal and it has been a challenge. But ultimately, Tim, a few people have said to me, well, What's the point? Why have they got the announce? You know, there's no fans in. But yeah, I think one of the one of the answers I would give to that is the fact that when we score a goal, so Marcus Rashford, whoever it might be, right, Bruno Fernandez, they still want to hear that announcement booming right. in the stadium. You know, yeah. so it brings that little bit of authenticity, for want of a better description. So I think that's why that side of it, they've, they've kept my role on. And I'm so pleased they have because, you know, I've been on a journey from the very beginning and it's part of the history of Manchester United. And every game, I take a photograph. Every game, I take I a picture. You must have, what, over 20,000? <laughs> oh, I've, I've, I've got a lot of... Listen, on that journey of 21 seasons, when I've wow. been on the tours, I've been on seven tours. A few of them have included America. Oh, okay. Um so you yeah, also come, you travel with, I thought you only just stayed, you did Old Trafford only. So you follow the team. Yep. Oh, okay. No, well, I did, I did I did seven tours up to 2017. And then and then they changed it um, with some of the backroom staff like me because there was too many going. And at the time, they shaved it and cut it back, which was only right. You know, it was it was turning into sort of like, it, it was you know, more more staff than there were fans going. So it was, it was getting a bit busy. But 
no, it, it, that was a great experience in itself. So, yeah, I've been very fortunate, Tim. But that's that's the journey, and that's how I got into it. Right, nice. So, like, like now that because people say, like, wow, it's now there's no fans. What's your every what's your every day match day like for you now without fans? And when is it different? Your preparations are they different now? Yeah, yeah, it is different because obviously on a match day, you know, most matches at Old Trafford. They're, they're what we call sometimes a sponsor game or a partner game where, you know, you'll have uh, whoever the, the partner is at the time has, who has that match. So it might be Aon, it might be, you know, Chevrolet, it might be Marriott, you know, it's any of the, the many Adidas, the many sponsors United right. have. So you've got all that side of it. Obviously, you've got the pre-match where, you know, you're doing a sponsor read, you're doing ticket information, you might do a birthday request for, request or welcome wow. from america you know tim russell you know you might right. do all that it's, sort it's, of it's thing. quite a lot i mean we only see the 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 after work we don't see what goes behind how much work is put into it because we just see the finished work you produce to us yeah. wow wow yeah and, and obviously you know there's, there's a situation where there's a running order so you know you've got to do that link then you've got to do this link then and it, you know there is a schedule it's not just where i rock up and I, I just ad lib all the way through there's none of that you know it's very very tight machine but right. a very enjoyable machine to be part of you know right so it must have been you must i mean for 21 seasons wow i mean it's just like you're literally family you're literally part of old trafford you are old trafford that's why they call you the voice of old trafford did this someone give you the nickname or it just stuck uh, well, that's an interesting story, actually. I don't, I don't get asked that very often. So, well done to you. Um, very early on, um, I was probably into my third season. Um, I stand to be corrected, but it was about the third season. And MUTV, mm. the in-house TV station, decided to do a day in the life of me at Old Trafford. Right. So, what they did, they were making um, like a compilation DVD. That old-fashioned word, you know. Yeah. Do you remember what one of them is, Tim? Yeah. Oh yeah. A DVD. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were making one of them, uh, and it was coming out at Christmas. So what they did, they shadowed me for a day at Old Trafford. From when I got out of the car, so I walked up to the reception. They they just kept filming everything that went on. So on the DVD itself, the actually the chapter they called it Alan Keegan, the voice of Old Trafford. Wow. And I thought. Well, if MUTV are endorsing that and the club are endorsing well, it, <laughs> there you I'm go. going to endorse it. I mean, it's 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 stuck. It's a stuck. God, voice of old traffic. Like you, it's like you just don't forget it. Like that voice, you just hear it. So, like actually meeting and talking, just like I actually spoke to the voice of old Trafford. Not yeah. So yeah, and, so, and it's um, it, it it's worked out really well because that actual tagline. Um, I've been very fortunate, Tim, because obviously as a result of that, you know, I do voiceovers mm. um, and I'm very fortunate because I think for the last four games, I've been the voice for the Premier League on FIFA. Yeah, I, 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 my friends were telling me about that as well. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so that was an amazing project to be part of. And, you know, it's just a wonderful experience, Tim. And, you know, I thank God I'm so fortunate to to be in these situations and to be in that position. So, you know, I'm very, very lucky. That is, that, that, that's great. I'm very, I'm proud of it. I'm just proud to at least, I know somebody who does it like, I'm not just, oh, oh I've actually spoken to you, met you virtually. I wish I could like shake your hand if I could see, but it was the pandemic. Yeah, but well, once well, I come to Old Trafford, definitely, definitely come yeah, to see you. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Well, a yeah. few questions the fans have. There's a, in all your time at Old Trafford, what's been the best goal you've ever seen at Old Trafford? You must have seen thousands. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I've been very, very fortunate, Tim, to be at some of the most, to be part of some of the most historical moments at Old Trafford, and you know the big games. I mean, the list is endless. But just I to know. give you two, or th to give you two or three, on a personal level, right. one of my all-time favourite goals, from a fan's point of view, and from the announcer's point of view, is when um, Paul Scholes scored the goal against Barcelona that took us to Moscow in 2008. I remember yeah. that scorcher. I remember that one. Yeah, it was a scorcher, as you say. And I, I was with um, Scholes and David May in Atlanta 
last March, just before Ooh. the lockdown. Oh. And we talked about that. And I said to Scolzi, he scored it after 15 minutes. It was it was scored in the in the East Stand end. And I said to Scolzi, it was the longest 75 minutes of my life. <laughs> I remember, I remember. Yeah, because I missed 99 at um, the Champions League final. I'd been to most of the away games all over Europe. Wow. And I, I happened to miss the new camp, unfortunately. So I always vowed wherever United, whenever United got to another Champions League final in my lifetime, I was going. And there I was, the semi final. Wow. We win, we get through. And then, Tim, you wait for invite me to go as the announcer. Oh, so that, no, that was a perk. Wow. You know, what they do, they ask each announcer to come from. Um, the two teams, you know, in this case, obviously it was Chelsea. Um, and what an experience that was, you know. And, and that's been the case, you know. I've been to, to Rome when we lost against Barcelona. I did Wembley when we lost to um, Barcelona. Obviously, good times when we went to Stockholm against yep. Ajax. I was the joint announcer there. So, you know, wonderful, wonderful experiences. And as you say, Tim... A lot of people don't see that side of it, that behind the scenes yeah. side of it, you know. Right. Can you... Do you want me to give you a few more goals? Yes. Two yeah. more would be great. So you've got you you've got the skulls you won. Um I have to say the overhead kick from Rooney oh. against City, you know, that was an absolutely amazing historical moment, you know. Um I mean, to announce goals by Rude Van Nisselrooy, you know, when we used to give it the, you know, United's goal, score by number 10, Rude, yeah. and the, all the stadium would go with it, you know. Um, Michael Owen's last-minute goal against, against City. City. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Robin Van Persie, the volley. Against Villa. Against Villa. That was fantastic. You know, so I, I've been there at some amazing moments, and it's just been an incredible journey, Tim. Right, right. Le another question is like, in all the time you've been at Old Travel, what has been the the best team that you've seen that is like the most dominant team in all the time you've watched Man United? Yeah, well, it's a difficult one. Yes, but I think is. that I'd have to say, just overall performance on the night, the team on the night, everything clicked into place. I'd have to say, the performance of one player, but the team as well, uh, is when Real Madrid came with um, the original Ronaldo, the Brazilian Ronaldo. Um, he absolutely ran the show that night. He was incredible. He was at his peak. Yeah. The team, the match itself was brilliant. And I don't know if you know this, Tim, but um, the Ronaldo, the Brazilian Ronaldo, mm. came off towards the end and I announced him. It was a substitution. Yes, I saw that. And Old Trafford stood up and gave him a round of applause. I saw that. I saw that. That, that was fantastic. It, it was. So I suppose when you, you're talking about the hair standing up on the back of your neck moment, that was a special moment. You know, I mean, it's very hard because, you know, you've got crunch games, like I mentioned, the one against Barcelona, where, um, you know, that took us to the Champions League final. You, you have all those sort of moments, you know, where as a fan, and not just the announcer, you know, your heart's in your oh, mouth. Of course. I could imagine. You, know, you have the best seat, the best seat in the house. I have. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm there right in the middle of the dugout, so it's amazing. <laughs> it is. I'm not there at the moment, obviously, with COVID. I'm to the left, <laughs> just out of the red zone, because uh, we're not allowed in that in that oh. part at the moment. So I'm just to the left of that. Um, you you know, you might see uh, Satam and all the Indian lads, you know, with the turbans yeah. where they are sometimes. Yeah, well, that's people where I am at where, the moment. Yeah, people ask, where are they now? They just stopped coming? No, no, they're, they're moved up a little bit further. Obviously, oh. when lockdown was on, they've just moved them up because a lot of the backroom staff and the away team staff sit there now. Oh. But they're only a few seats behind, but obviously they're not as prominent with the camera shot. Right, 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 right. Another question was, in all the time, what's been the favourite kit you've liked with my United players? The favourite kit that you like? You like that kit, AIG, AON, Sharp? Yeah, well, I mean, um, well, I mean, I have to say, you know, one of my favourite kits, but obviously I wasn't the announcer at the time, was right. was the Sharp one in 99. Yes, I mean, yes. that was a brilliant, brilliant kit. 
but you know, you, you look at the you look at some of the kits, and you know, I just love it when we won the uh, Champions League, and it was the AIG kit. You know, the memories that it creates. But you know, the kit's an interesting thing because you go back to the you know the sort of seventies and eighties, and there were right. some brilliant kits then as well. But I think I think I have to say the Sharp kit of ninety nine. That's that's been one of my favourites. You know, I, I love that kit and. Um, you know, I just, I mean, if you can just hang on there for one minute. Yeah. Yeah, I've got one here. Oh, I actually got yeah. one of those recently. I ordered one, but the long sleeve one. I just recently got one of yeah. those. Because I've always loved that yeah, well, this, travel shirt. Yeah, this one's signed by Ollie. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, nice. got that one's signed by Ollie. So, you know, that's a bit of a special one, Mark. That's uh, a brilliant and beautiful kit, mate. Right, right. So when when you when you're announcing on a regular when you're announcing for Man United all the time, you meet all these new uh, you meet players and new players, old and experienced, past and present. Do do do, do sometimes do you have that like you said the the hair sticking on the back of your neck? Do so some of them you feel intimidated by you at times? They must be. Um, I w- I wouldn't say they're intimidated, but you can understand. I mean. If I give you an example, one of my all-time favourite players growing up was Brian Robson, right? So he same, was Captain Marvel. Hair, he was the lead. Hair. Yeah, yeah. He just, for me, epitomised Manchester United. So when I started working for the club, obviously I get asked to host events, dinners, uh, partner events. And what will happen now is Brian Robson's like an ambassador for United, as yeah, you know. Yeah. So obviously he 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 he's at a lot of the events that I host. And that's where it's very surreal because they always say, don't they, never meet your heroes because it won't live up to the reputation. Brian Robson lived up to the reputation. Wow. What a legend. What a man. Absolutely 100%. And wherever I go with, with Brian, with Robbo, he's absolutely worshipped. But... You know, I've done stuff with, you know, before the lockdown, I did an event with Paul Pogba. Um, it's online, actually. You can have a look at it. Okay. Uh, it was um, an event for one of the sponsors. It's one of the sponsors. It comes under the banner, banner of Visit Malta. So Paul Pogba, uh, Brandon Williams and Victor Lindelof, they were doing that that event and I was hosting it. We had, we had to wear masks. Yeah. Um, but Pogba's... Pogba's a great lad, you know, and he's, I, could, he's, I, I know he, he comes well, across as a very cool, nice guy. Oh, he's a lovely fella, and and you can see, you know, he's so happy within himself, and you can see the football he's playing at the moment is brilliant. So, you know, you you meet these different players, but you know, Gary Neville, he's always got something to say. I've done <laughs> stuff with Gary, you know, he's never short of a word, or you know, if he can make it go this way with an event, he'll make sure it goes that way, and. You know, brilliant, brilliant players for United. They're legends, and it's just been a pleasure and an honour for me. You know, I, sometimes I have to pinch myself to think, you know, I'm just a normal Man United fan, and I've got the best job in the world, Tim. You have, you. mate. You have, mate. Uh, no, you are the man, mate. You are the man. We Because it's like, I started following United. My, my family are all Spurs fans, because born in North London. So Spurs was White Hart Lane, not far from the family. So my dad and my mum were Spurs, but... There was just something about United in the 80s, even though they were not the most dominant team, it was pure Liverpool. There was just something about that United, that admiral kit. I just kept getting drawn to United. And when Brian Robson came, I, he was my hero. At school, they said I, I was uh, the black Brian Robson or the black Steve Koppel. That was what I was because I used to play. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so I love those. I love Brian Robson. He made me love United. And, you know, he played in an era where United struggled, but he was... He scored the goals. He played the defense. He played attack. He was literally the main man. You know what I mean? He was the man yeah. for United. He, he, car- he carried the club and he carried the team. And what a player! But you know, we got you. You go back to me in legends. You know, like um, my very first game as the announcer, Old Chafford was actually. Were you um, nervous? Were you nervous on the? Oh, I was very nervous. <laughs> yeah, I, I get I get nervous now, Tim. I still get nervous. Why? You know, before, yeah, you know when you stood at the end of the tunnel and. In normal times, and you've got 75,000 people <laughs> and they're waiting for United to come out and then you're waiting for the team because my signal is when the referee starts to walk. So the minute he starts to walk, 
you know, good afternoon, welcome to Old Trafford, welcome to the Theatre of Dreams, you know, and it's, you still get that sort of butterflies, it's a, it's a, a you know, an excited nervousness there, Tim, yes. but yeah, yeah, I do, I still get that, but going back to some of the legends, my very first game was Dennis Irwin's testimonial. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was against City, and, you know, um, it was an amazing experience because, you know, all of a sudden I'm here the week before or a few weeks before I'm sat in the Stretford end with my wife watching the game and two or three weeks or whatever time a month later, I'm, I'm down pitch side, like living the dream, you know? So, you know, and then I do a lot of stuff with Dennis now as well. So you, you meet these players who are part of the history and the fabric. Yeah. Of yeah. Yeah. Because I, I um, when um, Alex Stepney and Brian Brian McClare came down to Houston, Texas, they spoke to our channel and we interviewed them. Fantastic guys, Brian McClare, yeah. Alex Stepney, fantastic people. I mean, they cracked so many jokes. It was fantastic. So we're waiting when you come over to Texas. That will be we we we're waiting for you, Alan. When you come, we'll be waiting. Yeah, well, I look forward to it. When all the travel restrictions finish, yeah. we'll make it a date in the diary. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. So, I mean, yeah, so now that we've locked down now, things are beginning to open up. Do you see the fans coming back soon or we're looking next season altogether? What do you think? Um, well, I think the word over here that they're trying to accommodate. Um, see, I'm not sure what it's like in the US, but over here, May the 17th, which is mm. a Monday, is a very big date over here. Oh wow! Because there's gonna the restrictions are gonna um, be, be be less if you like. You know, there's right. gonna be a lot more things open, and one of them is where they're looking at. Um, that's the last weekend of the football season. Oh. So what they're trying to do, instead of it being on the the sat on the Sunday mm. um, towards the end of the season, it's not the last weekend. They're gonna move those games to the midweek. Oh, so the wow. games that would have been played like the, the, the 15th and the 16th, right. they're going to play it. So that happens to be our game against Fulham. Right. So mm. what they're looking at, there's, there's talk of allowing 10,000 fans into the stadium for that game. So hopefully that will be the start where, you know, they'll use it as a tester. They'll have an idea of the amount of fans that they want to let in. And they'll see how it'll work, you know, because obviously I'd imagine, I don't know this, but I'd imagine they'll all be on the lower tier and right. it'll be the Stratford end, the um, Charles Ferguson stand and the East stand. Right. So I think it'll be that because obviously you've got all the media and the press in the South stand of the right. Bobby right. Charlton stand. So I think, I think Tim, you know, look for that game, the, the, the Fulham game. I think there'll, there'll be 10,000 fans in that game. You know, if, if, if what, what we're reading and what we're hearing, I mean, anything can change, as you know. That's right. That's right. My mum says, because my mum's in London, she keeps saying, you know, things are beginning to open up, but there's still little restrictions in London, more restrictions. Sometimes they close all the pubs and reopen. So it's like up and down. So one thing yeah. they'll say, then it'll change again. When there's a spike in numbers, they'll shut down. I get it. And I fully get it. You know, yeah. it is tough. It is tough. I think this whole calendar, as you can see, the fixtures, we have got to play what? Three games in five days or six days? It's yeah, well, it's I think lot. it's now it's worked out four games, I think, in eight days. Four games, you know, because yeah, oh, cause love Sunday. I'm just looking at, yeah, I'm just looking at my yeah, we've got Villa on Sunday. I'm just looking at my board here behind right. the screen. Right. So we've got Villa on Sunday, and then what's happened is the Leicester game has been moved to Tuesday. Then we've got the Liverpool game on the Thursday, yeah, and then obviously. Um, looking at the calendar, depending on how it works, we've then, I think, we've got the Fulham game then on the following Tuesday. So, yeah, it, but it's a lot of games in a short period of time. I mean, Ollie wasn't very happy when he did his I press conference. Imagine, I mean, there's no way. I mean, I mean, we don't even have so much depth. I mean, uh, and it's not a game you just, well, I'm just going to rest half the team. It's not possible. See what I mean? So he has a lot of problems to sort out. I mean, I don't know. The Liverpool game, the Villa game, you can't really rest players. Those are big games, you know? Yeah, yeah. We need the points. And I mean, you know, the last thing we want to do is be get to the, the, the last five games and yeah. all of a sudden we're fighting for third or fourth place. Yeah. You know, you can't rely on, on winning the Europa League you, you, to get into Europe. You've got yep. to do it yourself. So, yep. 
hopefully we will do. But as you say, you know, we've got a tough run in. How did you feel yesterday qualifying for the Europa League final? Yeah, I thought, listen, the most important thing was to get into the final. I mean, you know, we were disappointed. Obviously, we'd like to have won the game, you know, but the intensity wasn't there. He made the two changes at half time with the left back and the right back. And, you know, I think Mambazak had had the yellow card, so he wanted to avoid him making another mistake and getting sent off and missing the final. Right. Um, so I, th I think the balance was a little bit, you know, taken back when that happened. And, and, and I think... Roma got a little bit of a the sort of there was a ten minute period where they yeah. sort of really picked up, picked up the game. But listen, you know, we lost in in what, whatever it was three or four semi finals for Ollie. Oh, so it yeah. was important important to get over the line. And you know, eight three, we won eight three, and that's all that matters. That's, you know, no, no one's going to be bothered about that if we pick up that trophy in a couple of weeks. Time. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, I, I, the result was, hey, it is what it is. We are in the final. At least we got to the final. So it's now just winning the trophy and making sure yeah. we're done. That is all we need to do. And I, I'm so excited. One last question from the fans is, when you meet... Oh, uh, what's, I'm trying to read it. I've gone through that, gone through that, gone through that. When oh when players is that when ex players come to play, so I think they're, I think they're referring to when people like Ronaldo or other players who play for United come back to play with another team. How do you how do do they do you how do you respond to them? Like when Schmeichel played for City, I think, or when he played for Villa, how did how was the atmosphere with you with the fans and with that individual player? Yeah, well. Well, Ronaldo, Ronaldo's a good case because um, when Ronaldo came back, it was um, obviously in a Champions League game and, um, and, and Sir Alex Ferguson had had a word with me to, um, to say that when we, were, when we were announcing Ronaldo, out of the 11, mention him last. <laughs> so Sir Alex Ferguson, it was the only time he'd ever had a word with me to change the running order of the team because obviously Ronaldo's number seven, so he would have been halfway down. You know, you'd have had Ramos number six, mm. and then whoever else, um, Benzema number nine, and whatever. But Sir Alex, and on that night, he actually said to me, "Normally, what we do, Tim, we do the away team first. Yes. So then we'll say, you know, and Real Madrid line up this evening, and the number one, I, you know, Casillas, whoever it was." You know, nice and low, and then Old Trafford, Manchester United lineup. You know, and you go into it. Yes. And what we did that night with with the request of Sir Alex, we switched it round. Oh wow! So we did, yes, we did United first, and we do the eleven, only the starting eleven. And ironically enough, that night I think it was the one thousandth game for Ryan yes. Giggs. Yes, it you know, was. So That's if, you, if you look at the clip on YouTube, it erupts. And then I go through Real Madrid and I get to, and welcome, number seven, the stadium. And it was just all the emotion. And Sir Alex Ferguson, you know, he... he, I he we just, saw, we could see his eyes all lit yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it was just an amazing experience. So, yeah, I mean, Ronaldo, uh, that was a special welcome back. And he always gets a special welcome. Uh, some players, not so much, you know, when when... Angel Di Maria returned with PSG. Oh. <laughs> he didn't get a very yeah, he, he didn't get a very warm welcome, let's just say. You know, um, I'll tell you a funny story. Yeah, when go on, um in, in 2008, we played obviously, I mentioned it a few moments ago, we, we played Chelsea in the Champions League final. Yes. So the following season, because obviously that was May, the following season, we when we played Chelsea at Old Trafford. Yeah. Obviously, I, I, I go through the team numbers in numerical order. And you might have to help me here. I can't remember if... I think John Terry was number 26 or number 24. He's one of those two numbers. Yeah. But anyway, so I'm going through... And this is the first... Because obviously, we do the away team first. So, yeah. you know, number one, Petr Cech, or whatever it was. Number two, number three. Get through it. And normally, the fact the stadium, the boo in the away team and all the rest of it. Anyway... Um, when I came, and number 24, John Terry, the whole stadium erupted and started cheering and clapping for John Terry because of his penalty slip in the Champions <laughs> League final. 
and that was the first time they'd seen him. So uh, that was an amazing experience, you know, to to be part of that as well, you know. So, yeah, I mean, some players, obviously, um, you know, when Teddy Sheringham came back to United, um, when he was with, I think he was with Tottenham and he was with Portsmouth, um, he got a fantastic welcome. So it's always a little bit different with certain players, you know, right. and certain certain players, you know. Oh, um, York. Yeah, Cole and York would always be welcomed back. You know, they they were they were two legends and they they went about it the right way, you know. Um but yeah, some players get a better rece- get better welcome than others. Right, right. So yeah, that, I mean it's 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 ironic whereby you know you these people, I mean, players go and come, you know, but the fans are going nowhere, you know what I mean? So, you know, they worship certain players, certain players leave like the whole Tevez thing. Fans like, mm, you know, the certain players when they leave is never the best. Some players when they leave, we're like, okay, we 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 respect that. So I mean, but some players are like, you just just stay, don't come back. And when they do, like, like I said, the Di Maria one, that was literally sad. You know, the yeah, insult. Yeah. The, you know, the yeah, it, it literally insulted yeah. the club. So hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so was, even when yeah. he plays now for PSG, I watch games. And they just this not they dislike that guy. They want him to miss. They're happy PSG didn't go for just because of him, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> well, it is. So um, but it is. So now that uh, games are coming thick and fast now, uh, and the last one was um, when 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 you speak to people, do do you speak to the team, the United players before the game? Like you get to see them, like talk to them, or no. On a match day and the build up to the game, mm. it's totally professional and there's no access to the players and there's no access now because of COVID. Right. So at the club, at the club, you get, so I'll, I'll give you a quick example. When, when, so I'll, I'll drive to the stadium, I'll park in the car park, I'll walk across the car park for about 100 metres, you get your first temperature check. Wow. Yep. You've, got, you've got to pass that. Obviously, you go through your next stage then where I might pick up some notes or information that you know might be just delivered on the day where I've got to just make sure things are happening. And then you go up to another part, which is right near the... Have you ever been to the back where the players' entrance is? The big two yes, red gates. Yes, a long gates. time ago. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah, part. yeah. Well, there's two massive red gates where you yes. walk over to that, that position and then you get your temperature taken again. Oh wow! If you get through that, then you're allowed into the stadium. You know, um, so it at the moment you've got a red zone and an amber zone, mm. and unless you're part of the first team or the staff or or within the running of the day, right? No one is allowed in the red zone, including me. I'm not allowed in it. So as I said, if you're if you're sat where Ollie's sat in the dugout looking at right. the pitch, I mentioned it before, I'm just to the left. Right. And I'm You're with all the TV left. guys, right. you know, Jeff Shrees. Yeah. yeah, you've got the middle, you've got Ollie in that dugout, you've got the away team in this dugout, and then I'm just another 20 metres there to the left. And then we have to get, get all that information. That's called the amber zone. But there's no access to the pitches, uh, to the pitches, no access to the players whatsoever, Tim. None at all. Wow. You, you've got to be in their bubble. So, you know, apart from that event I told you about that I did when the lockdown, the first lockdown um, finished, mm. I did it with, like I said, the three players. There's been no access to players whatsoever. Wow. Uh, I, I get it. I mean, it, it, it this in this moment we live in, yeah, it, it, they have to do that because, you know, they don't need players being out for COVID infections. I get it, you know, and... They've, I think United have done a very good disciplined job and the players have responded by following protocol for the team and, you know, what it requires. And I'm really proud of United. They've not had any, so many cases of players breaking curfew and travelling and all that. They've done well, but, you know, it's, United have always been professional, you know? So I'm, yeah, I'm not... Also, yeah, also as well, you know, and it's the small detail, but every game, so, you know, the footballs, mm. when they go out of, when they get kicked out, mm. You might have seen it. They have balls lined up a lot yeah, around the yeah. pitch. Yeah. When that ball that's been kicked out, they have staff around the pitch with a spray gun 
and a cloth and everything gets wow white that's intense yeah that's the attention to detail you don't see that obviously because yeah, it's off yeah. camera but um yeah every ball the minute it gets kicked out there's a there's a team of people around the pitch spray the ball wipe it and then put it back on the cone ready for when it's needed for wow, the next that is intense while. mate that is intense yeah. Well, fans, you have met and spoken to and heard from the voice of Old Trafford, Mr. Alan Keegan. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, drop your comments, tell us what you think about what you've heard from Alan. Has he answered all the questions you were in, in, interested in? Just let us know. So thank you, Alan.